We too are human beings, written by Bama. When I was studying in the third class, I hadn't yet heard people speak openly of untouchability. But I had already seen, felt, experienced and been humiliated by what it is. I was walking home from school one day, an old bag hanging from my shoulder. It was actually possible to walk the distance in 10 minutes, but usually it would take me 30 minutes at the very least to reach home. It would take me from half an hour to an hour to dawdle along, watching all the fun and games that were going on, all the entertaining novelties and oddities in the streets, the shops and the bazaar. The performing monkey, the snake, which the snake charmer kept in its box and displayed from time to time, the cyclist who had not got off his bike for three days and who kept pedaling as hard as he could from break of day, the rupee notes that were pinned on to his shirt to spur him on, the spinning wheels, the Mariatha temple, the huge bell hanging there, the pongal offerings being cooked in front of the temple, the dried fish stall by the statue of Gandhi, the sweet stall, the stall selling fried snacks and all the other shops next to each other. The street light always demonstrating how it could change from blue to violet. The Nari Kuravan hunter gypsy with his wild lemur in cages selling needles, clay beads and instruments for cleaning out the ears. Oh, I could go on and on. Each thing would pull me to a standstill and not allow me to go any further. At times, people from various political parties would arrive, put up a stage and harangue us through their mics. Then there might be a street play or a puppet show or a no magic, no miracle stunt performance. All these would happen from time to time, but almost certainly there would be some entertainment or other going on. Even otherwise, there were the coffee clubs in the bazaar. The way each waiter cooled the coffee, lifting a tumbler high up and pouring its contents into a tumbler held in his other hand. Or the way some people sat in front of the shops chopping up onion, their eyes turned elsewhere so that they would not smart. Or the almond tree growing there and its fruit which was occasionally blown down by the wind. All these sights taken together would tether my legs and stop me from going home. And then, according to the season, there would be mango, cucumber, sugar cane, sweet potato, palm shoots, gram, palm syrup and palm fruit, guavas and jackfruit. Every day, I would see people selling sweet and savory fried snacks, some halva, boiled tamarind seeds, and iced lollies. Gazing at all this one day, I came to my street, my bag slung over my shoulder. At the opposite corner, though, a threshing floor had been set up and the landlord watched the proceedings seated on a piece of sacking spread over a stone ledge. Our people were hard at work, driving cattle in pairs round and round to tread out the grain from the straw. The animals were muzzled so that they wouldn't help themselves to the straw. I stood for a while there, watching the fun. Just then, an elder of our street came along from the direction of the bazaar. The manner in which he was walking along made me want to double up. I wanted to shriek with laughter at the sight of such a big man carrying a small packet in that fashion. I guessed there was something like vadai or green banana bhaji in the packet because the wrapping paper was stained with oil. He came along holding out the packet by its string without touching it. I stood there thinking to myself, if he holds it like that, won't the package come undone and the vadais fall out? The elder went straight up to the landlord, bowed low and extended the packet towards him cupping the hand that held the string with his other hand. The landlord opened the parcel and began to eat the vadais. After I had watched all this, at last I went home. My elder brother was there. I told him the story 
in all its comic detail. I fell about with laughter at the memory of a big man and an elder at that, making such a game out of carrying the parcel. But Anand was not amused. Anand told me the man wasn't being funny when he carried the package like that. He said everybody believed that they were upper caste and therefore must not touch us. If they did, they would be polluted. That's why he had to carry the package by its twig. When I heard this, I didn't want to laugh anymore, and I felt terribly sad. How could they believe that it was disgusting if one of us held that package in his hands, even though the vadai had been wrapped first in a banana leaf and then parceled in paper? I felt so provoked and angry that I wanted to touch those wretched vadais myself straight away. Why should we have to fetch and carry for these people, I wondered. Such an important elder of ours goes meekly to the shops to fetch snacks and hands them over reverently, bowing and shrinking to this fellow who just sits there and stuffs them into his mouth. The thought of it infuriated me. How was it that these fellows thought so much of themselves? Because they had scrapped four coins together? Did that mean they must lose all human feelings? But we too are human beings. Our people should never run these petty errands for these fellows. We should work in their fields, take home our wages and leave it at that. My elder brother, who was studying at a university, had come home for the holidays. He would often go to the library in our neighboring village in order to borrow books. He was on his way home one day, walking along the banks of the irrigation tank. One of the landlord's men came up behind him. He thought my Anand looked unfamiliar and so he asked, Who are you, Appa? What's your name? Anand told him his name. Immediately, the other man asked, Thambi, on which street do you live? The point of this was that if he knew on which street we lived, he would know our caste too. Anand told me all these things and he added, Because we are born into this community, we are never given any honor or dignity or respect. We are stripped of all that. But if we study and make progress, we can throw away these indignities. So study with care, learn all you can. If you are always ahead in your lessons, people will come to you of their own accord and attach themselves to you. Work hard and learn. The words that Anand spoke to me that day made a very deep impression on me. And I studied hard with all my breath and being in a frenzy almost. As Anand had urged, I stood first in my class. And because of that, many people became my friends.